Hi and welcome to Quadratic Models. Oh yeah. Hello internet land. Hopefully you're out there watching. Hopefully this is useful. Let us know if it is. That would be really, really helpful. And if I could do something better, please be nice. Then just let me know. Okay, thanks very much. So, good news. We're almost at the end. This is in fact the last lesson on the quadratics topic. And, uh, you know, there's some revision. Um, but once we've done that, we can put a big dick against quadratics. Right, so as I've said, they're tools. Everything you've been learnt, uh, everything you've been taught so far is a tool. They're techniques, techniques which will hold it, help us solve the bigger problems, right? We're now going to look at a family of problems. And they're basically all the problems you tend to get in quadratics, particularly at 11 level, tend to fit into sort of broad categories of this is the type of question and this is then how to go about solving them. So we've already looked here at uh, modeling. Uh, which is where we take an actual situation real life and we put maths to it. And sadly, while she is a fabulous model, uh, I'm never going to be on a catwalk. We've already talked in a previous lesson about this question here. Right? It was a bridge problem and we basically said it could be modelled as a quadratic equation. We needed to be able to visualise the quadratic. We can see a quadratic. We needed to find what information they'd given us. So we worked out that we could find three coordinate points here. We then need to work out well, which, given those three points, was the best quadratic form. And we decided it was y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. We then used our calculator to define that function. We gave it the pieces of information, which was when 0 went in, 75 came out. When I put 90 in, 30 came out. And when I put 180 in, 75 came out. Use my calculator to solve for the values of A, B, and C, and out drop the information, all right? So, and again, use your CAS to solve it. That's what this whole course is about. It's about using the CAS. Lots of questions on quadratics, but as I say, there are common, common types of questions. So, the first one is there's a fence around a field, hedge, pool, etc., right? And here's a great picture of a fence. This question has been taken from Cambridge Essentials, not to infringe copyright, but to give some indication of, you know, using a great question, and I am teaching to this course. So, the great thing about this is it's a trick. Firstly, here is my hedge. It's told me that I have a rectangle of perimeter 20 meters. Let x be the length of one side, find a formula for the area of the rectangle in terms of x, and hence find a maximum area. So, in this situation here, and I'm just talking about gen 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 generics, if it is a fence around a field or hedge, then what we actually know is our rectangle or our fencing is actually going to be 20 meters, but only along these three sides. So many people make mistakes and include the hedge, don't. So, we now know the perimeter is 20. It says that let x be the length of one side. So, I'm going to let that be x which means that must also be x. It wants us to find the area of the rectangle. Well, to find the area of the rectangle, I need to know both the length of that side and the length of that side. Well, how am I going to find this, this length here? Well, they've told me the perimeter. So if I know that the height is x and that length is x, then that's two x's together, which would suggest that this now becomes 20 minus 2x. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Very, very similar. Can I use that now to find the area? Absolutely. Area is equal to length times width, which will give me x times 20 minus 2x. It wants me to find a maximum area. Right, maximum, maximum and minimums. Where have I seen maximum and minimums before? Well, quadratics. Remember, that turning point there would be a minimum. The only way we can have a maximum is by having a quadratic in that form. So that would be my maximum. Oh, this is a quadratic. So if I multiply that out, I get 20x minus 2x squared. You're going to say it doesn't look anything like a quadratic. Yes, it does. Although we've got a equals, I can rearrange that to minus 2x squared plus 20x. Ah, oh, that minus sign there, because it's part of the x squared, means that my quadratic is going to have that form. Ah, to be able to find these intercepts here, all I need to do is put that equation equal to 0. So x lots of 20 minus 2x equals 0. That's nice and wonderfully factorized for me already. So using null factor law, I know x equals 0. 
or 20 minus 2x equals 0. So x must be equal to 10, which means I now have my crossing points at 0 and 10. Well, how is that going to help me find the maximum? Well, if you remember, parabolas have a axis of symmetry around the center. If I know that's 0 and I know that's 10, then I know that that has to be 5, which tells me if I have my x value of 5, put it into here, and I get my maximum area. These questions are so similar. You know, question number two, exactly the same idea. A wire of length blah is bent into a rectangle. Well, it's no different from previously, although this time now, if you're going to have a wire bent into the rectangle, you're going to have four sides. So if we had that as 20, again, say the perimeter of my wire was 20 meters long, that's a big wire, and they tell me once again to make this x and x, we now need to be very careful that we don't get tricked. Well, the way I think of this is, we know the whole perimeter is 20. I'm going to take away the two x's, which gives me what I've got left, but that has to be subdivided between these two parts. So that has to be halved, which gives me 10 minus x. All right, that's one way of doing it. The other way is, well, if I know the whole perimeter is 20, I know half the perimeter is 10. I know this vertical length is x, so if I do 10 minus x, that has to be 10 minus x. And once again, finding the area, you just do x times 10 minus x is equal to the area. Solve it by putting it equal to 0. Because they want a maximum area, you're going to end up with a parabola. That's one of your solutions. That's one of your solutions. Halfway between is the axis of symmetry, and I can use that information to find my maximum area. Because again, remember, this is my value of x, but by drawing this graph, you're having it as x against area. The last one is where they actually give you a quadratic that describes a particular situation and find the formula or interpret it in some way. Okay, so... Uh, if, for example, like cricket, they may tell you that there's a particular uh, equation that says oh, the distance is given by 3t squared minus 6t, for example, right? Uh, we'd have to make that minus 3t squared. And they'll say, given that equation, find the maximum time it takes to land or find the maximum distance traveled or whatever else. Well, again, if they've given you that equation, you need to solve it. Put it equal to zero, find crossing points, end up with graphs. They're all very similar. It's probably nicer when they give you the formula because generally speaking, they'll walk you through it. But, you know, it's important to note that every one of these questions has the same general idea. Find an equation which will be a quadratic. Solve it in some way. Find the maximum or minimum depending on the function they've given you. Right? And again, maximum, that's obviously a minimum, a maximum is just depending on, on the equation they give you. You know, they could ask you to find points on the curve. In every case, please use your CAS. It will save you hours and hours of time. The hardest part of the question is trying to set up the quadratic, right? When you don't know a side length, call it x. Then relate all other measurements on the diagram in terms of, yeah? So, as I say, the th major types of questions are fences around hedges, wires bent into shape, or they give you something. Now, there's not lots of questions for me to go through because all of them are very, very different. I think that's really down for you to practice. So that's basically drawn quadratics to a close. Thank you very much for your time. I look forward to seeing you on the next section. It's been so great having you watch this video that I'd like to see you again and again and again. Wow, we could make some amazing maths together. So if you'd like to, and you'd like to be updated as to when I upload new videos, why not subscribe by clicking the button on the right? Otherwise, if you want to click and see another video created for this type of series, then click the video on the left. All right, well, you have an awesome day, and I look forward to seeing you again.